Okay, so in this lecture, what we're going to do is focus more on setting up the actual HDA so that when we get all the data from our top network, we can instantiate our foliage onto our terrain tile. Okay, so let's go take a look. Alrighty, so uh, I changed my mind. I'm actually going to just keep this to a single input uh, because what we're doing is we're passing in a CSV file. We're not passing in any sort of geometry. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it in a little bit different way. So we're just going to use, we're going to go and find the file. All right. So we're going to allow people to define different CSV files, which actually I think um, comes in more handy when working on a game production. You might have a couple different CSV files that you want to uh, interchange or swap out basically. So we're just going to keep it to that one input. But if you did, you know, have multiple pieces of geometry, you could uh, go in there and add a second input and then, your HDA then would have two inputs, right? So you would come into the type properties up here and you would just add a second input. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna remove the output there. I don't need that. All right, so let's accept that and let's get into our scattering HDA. So here I have the PDG output, okay? This is being fed in by this file and that's, we can see that because again, I have my work item selected over here so I'm Let's just select this one. Okay, there we go. So we can see that particular tile. All right, and what I wanna do is I want to come into my scatter HDA and I wanna to start to develop a series of masks. And these masks are gonna allow me to scatter types of foliage, okay? And really, uh, to keep things simple for now, all right, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a you know, single mask where all foliage is, is going to go, but you can create, you know, many types of masks and have different types of foliage in different areas. Okay. So with this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a feature node or a mask by feature. Okay. And I'm going to basically go and find the slope. So most of this stuff is going to be slope based, you know, trees uh, and rocks and things like bushes, they only grow up to a certain slope. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the max slope angle can be something like 50 degrees and our min, we'll just keep it down uh, to zero. Or actually, let's do something like three. Just make it feel a little more realistic. Plus it'll, you know, not put trees in these little valleys where there probably would be a river or something like that. Okay. And I want to invert that mask like so. We want to kind of grow that a little bit more actually. All right. Cool. So one of the things that I, I really want to take care of here is I really don't want to have trees. Now, this is just a personal preference. All right. You can leave this, but I really don't want to have trees right at the, these tips here of the, the mountain. It just kind of feels a little awkward and unrealistic. I want to keep the trees in these, you know, major flat areas here. So what we can do is we can name this node slope and then drop down another uh, feature node. So I'm just going to use the history down here. Okay. We're going to feed in the result of the slope feature. And this one's going to be our curvature. So we're going to do a curvature mask. Okay. And I think on the slope, I'm going to smooth out the radius a little bit just to kind of clean it up. There we go. Something like that. So I'm going to come down to this uh, curvature and I'm going to check off the slope and I'm going to check on the curvature and uh, we can compute the range here. That'll give us some masks to start to work with and really what i want to do is just pull these guys basically into the center and what this will do is it'll go and find those places of high curvature or those peaks and you also get the you know the nice little valleys down here and we can always increase the intensity or decrease the intensity with this particular slider right here uh, but 0.5 usually works pretty well for this particular task all right and again i'm going to go and um, smooth the radius a little bit just kind of make it a little more generalized there. And what we want to do is we actually want to subtract this mask from the slope mask. Okay. So what I'm going to do is do a subtract and you can see that gets rid of the, the peaks. And I actually need to increase the smooth radius a little bit more, maybe, and maybe reduce this one a little bit, something like that. All right, cool. So that does a pretty good job. We can always come down here and Increase that a little bit more. Let's just help make the, the scattering look a little bit more realistic. All right, so 
one of the next things I want to do is, you know, I kind of want to control this clumping or density of the actual trees. And so I'm just going to do kind of a general masked noise. All right. So we're going to do a masked noise here. Like so. And we are going to, let's do a subtract maybe. And we'll increase the, we'll decrease the element size. And we'll just keep the amplitude at one there. I just want to get this down to something you know, that looks kind of realistic, like so. Cool, right? You know, basically, again, it'll just make it feel a little bit more realistic because it's, it's not so uniform across the mask. All right, and we can go and play around with some of the different noises that we have. That actually looks kind of cool. Maybe we can make bigger clumps with this one, the simplex noise. Maybe reduce the roughness on it. Or increase it you know when you're doing this phase it's a lot of experimentation i have found at least all right so with that i think we're pretty much good to go that's going to be you know pretty good for our particular masking for our foliage all right I always increase this a little bit more something like that there we go cool all right, so I think that's going to work out fine. We can always come back and adjust it later. So let's move on and uh, get our scattering stuff going. Okay, so these are all of our masks. So we're going to use these masks to scatter on. So the first thing I really want to scatter are the rocks because the rocks basically block other types of foliage from growing. So we want to start with the rocks. All right, so what I'm going to do is drop down a height field uh, scatter node. It's all the way down at the bottom here. Cool. And we're going to feed in our current height field and these guys are the mask so we want the mask from this guy there we go and you can see that when we do that we actually get points just in those areas it's a lot easier to see when we hit the w key on the keyboard there so now we're getting points scattered about on our terrain using that particular mask all right so that's going to work out pretty good for us and i'm going to leave most of this stuff on defaults right now um, because this could be a whole nother course in and of itself. And SideFX actually does have a course on using all the new height field scattering nodes. Okay, so but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move forward and utilize this particular solution right here. All right, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna call this um, rocks. All right, cool. So these are all of our rock points. And the reason why I did that is because this tag name up here, all right, has the dollar $OS in it. And this means that it's going to pick up that name and actually provide us a tag. So we can use that tag information in our scattering. So you can see right here, we have a tag string. Okay. And this tag string is going to be set to rock or rocks. Okay. Cool. So what we want to do now, I'm actually going to reduce the amount of points that we have here for our rocks. All right. Let's just do this here. We don't want to have so many rocks, so we'll probably have to expose that particular value. All right, so that's going to be cool. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to create the tree points. All right, so the trees are going to be next on our particular list of foliage. All right, and I like to do the trees next because what we can do is we can mask out where trees go with the rocks, and then we, we can mask out where bushes go with the trees and the rocks. Okay, so we'll do that. Cool. Keep these guys off to the side like so. All right. And there we go. So we want, you know, quite a few trees. So I'm going to leave it at a coverage value of 0 0.5. And what I need to do now, though, is I need to remove points that are too close to other rocks. So we're going to have to do a, a wrangle node for this. So I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle. And we're going to feed in the tree points. All right. So these are going to be tree points. The trees. As we say. There we go. Then I'm going to feed the rocks into the second input right there, input one. This is input zero. This is input one. And so what I want to do is I want to remove uh, points close to rocks. That's kind of a long name there, but we'll leave it for now. All right. And so in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the near point function. Okay. So I'm going to create a new int variable called near points. It's going to be a type of array, okay? And we're going to say near point 
from input one. And actually we need to provide a position. So let's bring up the help for this particular function right here. Alrighty, I just need to hit F1. There we go. So what we need to do is we need to provide it the geometry that we want to look up. And that's our geometry coming into input one. And we want to provide it the position. And that's the current position of the point that we're working on. So this is going to be at P. And then we want to provide a max distance. Now this is going to be basically our fall off. So I'm going to create a new channel float or float channel. And we're going to call this max dist like so. There we go. Cool. And what I can do now is hit this little spare parameter button here and we now have a max distance. So we can basically remove trees that are within the radius of this to every other rock, which works out very well for us. Okay. So with that information, we can now go and remove tree points that are within that rock radius, basically. So we're going to say if uh, near points or the length of near points is greater than zero, that means we have near points. So we should go check. Well, actually, we could just remove them. We can say remove point and we're going to remove the point from the first input. So the incoming tree points and we are going to just remove it. So I'm going to say at PT num because we're going to remove the current tree point because obviously we have a rock near us. Okay. And you can see that that removed a couple of trees. So let's just increase our radius and you can see that we're, we are removing tree points where there's rocks, All right? This will just help us take care of any intersections that might happen between rocks and trees. Very cool. Alrighty. So last step in all of this, and then we'll close out this particular uh, lecture uh, is we want to create the bush points. So I'm going to create another height field scatter. Alrighty, I'll just put this guy over here. We want to utilize the same current tile and the same mask. All right. And this time I'm going to pump the coverage up to something like 0.8. So we want a lot of bushes around the, the trees and the rocks. We'll just do one maybe. It creates a ton of points. If you ever want to know how many points you have, you come up here. We have almost 4,500 points. That is a lot of points. So we're, we're going to end up with a lot of bushes, a lot of trees, and not so many rocks. So we are doing good. So what we want to do is we want to basically do the same operation here. Okay. So I'm going to merge together my tree points, the final result of the tree points there and my rock points, because what I want to do is feed that into my attribute wrangle and I want to remove uh, bushes that are close to trees and rocks. Okay. And so we can come down here and now we don't need a max distance. That's so big. And you can see that our basic, Wrangle node, since I just copied or duplicated that node, um, is working exactly like it should. So we didn't have to type anything in after that. So now we can thin out the, the bushes that get close to a tree or a rock. Cool. So one thing I should mention before I close this out, you could also go and, uh, well, we also need to name this here. So we're going to call this uh, bush bushes. Um, you could also go and scatter the bushes based off of the points here. Right, so we could do a height field scatter like so and utilize the new, um, some of the new features in the height field scattering node. All right, so we could say that we want to actually scatter per point count using the source points. Okay, if I use that, you can see that now we're scattering around the trees and the rocks. Okay, and we can change that outer radius. It's almost almost the same amount or same type of function that we just set up inside of here. We're just making sure that things can only scatter um, around the current points that we're feeding into it. Cool. All right, so I'm actually just going to leave the solution that I have here because I think it's going to work a little bit better. So. We now have all of our points. Okay, so let's merge all these points together. Let's go merge those guys and merge these guys. There we go. So now we have a ton of points and they are ready to have information instantiated on them. And this is where the CSV file is going to come into play. So I'm going to close out this lecture here. And in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to import that CSV information and then apply it to the points. So that way, when we uh, put this into Unity, 
it'll actually instantiate our foliage onto each one of these points appropriately. Okay, thanks so much.